Hi everybody, welcome to the beginning of my savings, budgeting, and YouTube journey. I am here to represent the hardworking, low-income single parent. On this channel, I experiment with different budgeting styles, savings goals, and share the strategies I learn as I go. So if that sounds interesting at all to you, please go ahead and click the like button and subscribe to follow my journey. Alrighty, so today it, I'm going to show you my plan for September's budget. Um, I'm doing that a little bit early because I know that I'll have to do the last paycheck of August coming up soon. I'll be able to find out how much that paycheck will be on Saturday or Sunday. Then, but I had to get a master plan together for September. So if you haven't seen this, this is a new planner that I got. Um, this is a teacher's planner. So I have decided to use this for a few areas, categories in my life. I know that it's going to help for September. I haven't used it at all for August, but you see that I laid out all the bills for the month for September. Um, September's month for me, since I get paid bi-weekly and I do the A and B bi-weekly cheat sheet that I made. Let me show you that. Okay, so that's this here. So this is something that I made long, long time ago. So when I get paid, these are the bills that I pay one week. These are the bills that I pay, well, one pay period, because I get paid every two weeks. And these are the bills that I pay in the other pay period. So this gives me a nice even amount of $680. That amount stays into a separate checking account just for bills. So some of the bills come out automatically, others I pay manually. So that's the nice round number I know to keep in that account and not to touch it so I know that the bills can come out I don't have to worry about the bills at all and I explained this in several videos so I won't go through that but here is a quick look at it the title of each of these changed for September through December because of the three paychecks I got in August it threw this off um, it threw it off by a week so I just changed the names what used to be paid in a moved over to B, you know, vice versa. So I hope that makes sense. I just changed the name of each of the categories so that they're still paid on time. These are the due dates, these are the amounts, and this is the category that the bill, that's the bill, basically. I try to do it a little bit differently for September. What I try to do in September is to do a budget by paycheck but it didn't necessarily work out for me. Um, I still decided that 680 was a ma my magic number. So if the bills came out to be a little bit less, I just made sure that I'm gonna put a little bit more money on my credit card to make up to the 680 because I've already planned to always have $680 gone towards bills. So if I can get ahead in one or another, definitely is always a good thing. So I'll show you my master plan that I made for September. It went really well for August, so I decided I'm gonna start doing that every month. So for September, in order to figure out what bills needed to be paid, I had to include August a little bit. That just kind of helped me figure out what was left to pay. And I'll show you guys that part when I find out how much my last paycheck for August will be. So this is just kind of just an outline with that 680. $680 that I always plan for. Hopefully you can see September's master plan. So I put in what bills I want to pay with each with each of the paychecks. So an easier way for me to show you this is to pull out the budget sheet, the new one that I made for myself, and give you the breakdown on that. These are the new sheets that I made for myself. You guys know that I made a whole binder and I just kind of simplified it so that it would be easier for me to write out and easier for you to follow along with. So another cheat sheet that I made here is what I consider a month. I base my months off of my bi-weekly paychecks and my A and B system. So my month for September will start on the first paycheck of September, which will be September 13th. And it will go to October 10th. So my first check is September 13th. My second check is September 27th. So the end of that last bi-weekly pay period is October 10th. So that's a month for me when it comes to my budget. So that's how I budget, so September 13th through October 10th. That's the budget that I'm looking at. So you'll see that I highlighted that first week here, the 13th through the 26th is the first bi-weekly period, and then the 27th all the way until the 10th is the last bi-weekly period. So you'll see that I put little sticky notes for each of the bills that I have due throughout the month. And this August 30th paycheck is going to close out August. So that's why I said that I had to kind of include it so that I made sure all the bills were paid. So let's show you 
the breakdown of what September's month will look like. So September's month, again, it goes from the 13th all the way to the 10th of October. So I want to make sure that each of these bills are paid within that time frame. So those include half the mortgage here, allowance, utilities, Netflix, and um, half of the mortgage is going to get doubled, of course, because I have to pay a full month of mortgage. So for the month, it's going to be $860. Allowance, I have to double because I'm going to pay it here and there. So that's $40. Utilities, I left blank because I am ahead in utilities. So I wasn't sure how much I wanted to pay each pay period um, when I first did this. But I have since figured it out. Utilities isn't due until the 14th. But I do have a credit on my account of $48.47 right now. Um, so technically nothing is due, but I'm still going to put something on there. Phone bill is due on the 15th. Credit card minimum is due on the 21st. I always pay more than that, um, but I like to. I wanted to put just the minimum to start the basics of the budget, just in case I needed some extra funds. Um, this is her birthday, my daughter's birthday, um, so I wanted to make sure to put that down. That's going to affect the budget, but there is a sinking fund for that. And I will give you guys an update on that sinking fund as well, because something has changed. Um, and then you'll see the other half of the mortgage, another payment to utility. I like to pay that every two weeks if I can, just because I'm trying to get ahead before winter hits and that heat bill goes all the way up. Um, Amazon is due on the 8th. There's car insurance. Car insurance for October 2nd is only $55. Um, and that's because of the car accident and the credit that I got for having a different car. This car um, bill, it changed. So and internet is has gone up so internet was forty dollars and it has gone up to 55. let me make sure i added that to my cheat sheet i did not so i need to add that to my cheat sheet so let's fix that it's a good opportunity yes. so so I'll have to take probably some from utility because that's the most flexible one because I'm paying more than I have to. So we'll bring this up to 55. Again, we want to stay at the 680 if possible. So we're bringing this up $15. So we'll have to bring this down by $15. It might change in the winter time because of course it's going to go up but this is, that's the benefit of starting to have a credit early in the year so 124. another thing with utilities is i decided it was really hard for me to figure out how much my credit was on my account for some reason it's like they're hiding it from me which is really weird let me add up how much utilities will be now 124 this pay period and then 36. oops 160 so that together is 160 so it's definitely gonna have to go up in the winter time but for now we're making do I could also take from credit card but I'm hoping to have credit card done by the end of this year I think there's like a $300 balance on there right now because I have been using it like a bad girl but we're gonna pay that off by the end of the year for sure all right, so let's make sure that still adds up to 680. So 430. It does. All right, so we're good there. All right, so now that I've showed you that, I will break down the bills. All right, so this is going to be September. It'll be... September 13th through October 10th. This is the monthly budget. So I always budget with $1,300, but I've recently changed that because I noticed that with the overtime that I do, and I almost always do overtime, I have been seeing that my checks are steadily at least $1,400. So I'm gonna multiply that by two. So the monthly budget will be $2,800 for income. Not much, but we make it work. Okay, and I'm not going to include how much I will make for YouTube because I have no idea how much it'll be. <laughs> so, 
and I don't like to count money until I know that I'm gonna have it. Paychecks are different. They've been steady for quite a few months, maybe up to like six months. So I went back and I looked uh, to see how much it's been steadily. So employment, that's twenty eight hundred dollars. Um, savings is always the same. That's also on my cheat sheet because I have it automatically um, taken out of my paycheck and into the three separate savings accounts. So 100 goes into emergency every two weeks, 50 goes for my daughter every two weeks, and 25 goes into a car note fund that I have every two weeks. Make sure to go watch that video. It'll give you the breakdown of how I use my income tax to supplement my car note payment. All right, so savings, we have emergency, car note, and child's account. Yep, ignore my handwriting. That's just how I write. It is what it is. So if this is $100 every two weeks for the month, it's $200. Car note is $25 every two weeks. That makes it $50 for the month and my child savings account gets fifty dollars every two weeks that makes it a hundred dollars a month so that's three hundred and fifty dollars so we'll subtract 350 off the top gives us 24 50 to work with for the rest of the month and then we have mortgages due for october because september mortgage will be already paid by then October mortgage, October internet, because September internet is has already been paid with my last paycheck that I got. And let's see, next is October insurance, which is due on October 2nd. Car insurance. Okay, so since the paychecks that I get will be on the 13th and the 27th, Car insurance falls in that pay period for October. So that has to be paid with this paycheck. And I do, if you haven't seen my videos before, I do make sure that all the bills that are due within that pay period are paid on payday. That way I'm never late on a bill. So knock on wood, it's not real wood, but <laughs> knock on wood. I um, haven't been late on a bill. So, and I haven't been behind on any bills. So hopefully God willing, we stay on top of that and that does not happen. But you know, anything could always happen. Anything could always change. But we'll try our best to stay on top of it. Okay, and the next one, let's see. We have Netflix. And I know with Netflix comes Amazon. So yep, Amazon is in there. Um, what else? Phone bill. Allowance. That's also paid on payday. And then buffer. So what I was going to say about the utilities is the utilities, it has been very hard for me to figure out what kind of credit I had on my account. Like it literally wouldn't let me pay anything um, because I was going to make an extra payment this pay period. It would not let me. So from now on, since I have the credit, I'm going to make the extra payments to utilities um, a sinking fund because... It's like they don't want me to have credits on my account, so I'll have to stash it until it's due. Sadly, I really don't like that. I really don't like that idea at all, but just have to stay on top of it. Um, okay, so let's fill in these accounts, these amounts, and I will show you guys that. So for my buffer, I have two accounts. I have one account for my main expenses, which which right now I'm using just cash for. So I take one a big amount out of my main account for any of my um, variable funds. So gas, groceries, whatever that comes out of there and I don't touch it after that. And then the bill account, the bill amount, the 680 goes directly to that account every two weeks. And I don't touch that for anything but bills. So that's kind of how I've stayed organized so far. So let's calculate this and see how much we have left. It's 
11, 26. And then for the buffer, I should have right now, I think there's $75 in each account, which is a lot more than it used to be. I started building that buffer this month because I had the three pay periods. So I was only putting $10 every pay period and that was usually getting used. <laughs> so right now there should be a $75 buffer in each account. I don't believe that I've used it for anything, um, but even if so, it, it was a buffer. So I wanna keep that. The plan is to have a $100 buffer in each account. So that's the plan. So we're just adding to that little by little now since you know September will go back to our normal two pay periods. All right, so let's subtract the budget remaining, which was the twenty-four fifty minus one twenty-six, leaves us with thirteen twenty-four. Okay, and then my variable funds I have that written down here. My variable funds always gets four hundred and twenty-five dollars. So we're doing the monthly plan. This is a bi-weekly plan. So I have to multiply each of these by two because it's two pay periods. So personal for the month is going to get 50, home we get 50, and honestly I think I need to change these for some more because things are going up and I am noticing that $25 every pay period is not enough for home supplies. Oh, and I'm doing it wrong already. See? Got distracted. Let me use my month cheat sheet. That'd be smarter, huh? Huh? All right, so that's personal, household, gas is $100. Oh, my God, you guys. Yesterday, I... So you guys know I got a new car, not a new car, a used car, whatever, and it has a push to start and I'm so not used to it and I keep saying to myself, I hope I never forget to turn this off. I hope I never forget to turn this off. And what did I do yesterday? Parked my car in the lot for work for probably eight and a half hours and came back and my car was on. The lot attendant was like oh i tried to get a hold of you but they didn't know whose car it was because i have not had a chance to go to our parking office and update the car that i have which i have that on my to-do list to do tomorrow all right that's 850 dollars like it should be so this is why i need to stay on top of planning which if you la watch my last video, you'll know that that's something I'm definitely going to be implementing into my channel because it's something that's going to be affecting my life and my budget. Clearly, not not planning well and being all over the place is so used a bunch of gas because not only was the car on, the air conditioning was on. So, I only lost a quarter of tank, but I could use that quarter of tank. I don't know why I said only. I definitely could use that quarter of tank. It is what it is. It's over. It's done. Still done. All right, so next in debt, I only have one credit card. I closed the other card that I had, which was a Walmart card. So that one's closed. So I only have to worry about the one. Um, and it's a Discover card. So I'm just going to put credit card. And we are going to pay $90 on that. And for Klarna... There's only going to be $14 to do. And that'll be my last payment for Klarna. So this gives us, let's see, 90 and 14. Oops. Gives us $104. So 474 minus 104 gives you $370. Okay. And then my always fund. So I have been going back and forth on this on whether I am going to contribute to this right now or whether I just want to put it all to my credit card. Um, I might have to hold off on this and put that $100 to my credit card because I really want to pay that off ASAP because I've had the card for a year now. I got it in September of last year. So this is when the interest started accruing. It was one year, no interest. So I really wanna pay that off now. I don't know, let me know what you guys think. 
I really think that I should probably just put it towards my credit card. I think I am. And then if I have any extra money, I'll put it in towards the Always Fund and skip savings challenges. That's probably what I'll do. That's what I'm going to do. I just made my decision. So I'm going to put $190 on the credit card instead of $100 to the Always Fund. So $190 plus $14. 204. All right, so I just made that decision. That was easy. <laughs> See, this is what I like about doing my monthly plan. It's just, it's just that extra look that you need. All right, so 474 minus 204. And plus Christmas is coming up, so I want to be able to add more to that. So the Always Fund can wait. If I have any overtime for the month, um, it'll go to the Always Fund first and then to the Savings Challenges. I was putting the Savings Challenge in my budget, but credit card is priority because interest is going to start accruing. So sometimes your priorities will change. So make sure you're making the best decision that works for you and for your family. Make sure to sit down in a quiet spot and take your time and look at your numbers and see what decision is going to be best. Sometimes you have to move some things around like I just did. I literally planned on putting $100 to always fund, but in my head, I know that it's better. It'll be better to pay that credit card off if possible. And we'll see how much I have in overtime. I won't know that until later. But we'll see. We'll try to get that credit card paid by October, the latest, at least by the end of the year. I don't know. I'm talking to them. Let's see. All right. So we have $270 left. So I know for utilities, for the month, I plan on paying $91. And for Christmas, I plan on adding $79. So... $170. Oh, that's actually 200 Okay, see? I caught it again. So, <laughs> my always fund is $100 every two weeks. So, my I was wondering wh where I missed some money at. Always fund is $100 every two weeks, right? So, for the month, it would be $200. So, I would actually be able to pay $290 on the credit card. If I skip my always funds which will suck but that should basically pay off the credit card definitely should pay off the credit card so that will suck but that's okay it's just one month more of not having it because I just added it last pay period so <laughs> it's fine alright so what is going to be left? So 474 minus 304 is 170, right? And then there's going to be zero for this, which is 170. And then 91 plus 79 is 170. Okay, there we go. So the remaining is zero. Here we go. So that's what changed for this month's budget would be no always funds unless there are, there's overtime, which I won't know. Well, I know there's going to be some overtime. I just don't know how much because with my job, you don't get paid for the overtime for a month. So you work it and then a month later you get the money. So that's why I try to always stay on top of it so that when there's an emergency and I need it, I have the extra money already there because I can't just say, oh, I'm going to work overtime this week and then I'll get paid. It's just not how it works. Also, during Christmas time, I like to have a little bit more, too. So, that is September's budget. Sorry that it was a little bit all over the place, but at least you could see my thought process a little bit to decide, to show you how I decided what will go where. Um, the master plan is really helping before I do this. Let me show you that again. So, I did the master plan for August. That's not it. This was the master plan for August. And this is the first time I did the master plan. This was because there were three pay periods, so it helped me out a lot. And it also helped me because I almost missed Amazon. I bet I referred back to this August 30th. It's actually August 30th. I don't know why I have the uh, 31st day. But that's why I'm glad I looked back at this. 
here's September's master plan. You'll see that there's a lot of white out here because I was deciding on what to do with what. I also wrote down here how much the fixed expenses were and how much the sinking funds were. Utilities is usually a fixed expense. But because I have the credit on the account and they, they are giving me a hard time finding out how much is actually due coming up, um, I'm putting it in a sinking fund so that I can just add that up for the winter time. Because I don't want to be sitting in a house freezing because I'm worried about the bill. No, we want to have some funds, at least something built up to kind of contribute to what that huge bill will be. So also, September birthday, there was an update on September birthday. Sorry if there was a glare that whole time. <laughs> um, let me take it out. That'll help. So my daughter decided she didn't want to do anything for her birthday. We were talking about it last night and she decided that she just wants to go to an escape room with some friends and some family members. So that's what we'll do. So, um, and I have money saved up. I have three hundred and fifty dollars saved up, and I was planning on saving more. Um, but it's her birthday, so she gets to do what she wants. She's uh, she'll be fourteen years old, so I'm letting her make that decision. So I decided we're gonna take just one fifty for um, us to pay for her and for her friends for that day. It'll only be uh, three of them, maybe four. So we'll pay for that, and she gets the escape room for free on her birthday. So I'll plan $150 for that, and then I've decided $100 will go into her graduation fund, and the $100 will go into clothes for her. So that'll be the whole $350. So that actually works out really good. So um, I, I had a whole plan. We were going to go out of town. She, she doesn't know about where we were, where we were going to go, but this will save some money. So, I mean, definitely was not me pressuring her at all. She literally just came out and said she didn't want to do anything like that. So... That's what we're gonna do it's her birthday it's her choice and honestly it'll these things will still go to her so 100 will go to her graduation fund for when she graduates high school and 100 dollars will go towards clothes so if she wants some throughout the year um that sinking fund will start to grow as well all right i think that's all that i had to go over with you so i will come back and cross this out because always funds sorry honey you don't do anything um, but this is just the budget and the plan. Things might change, of course, with overtime. But I like to always have a basic so that everything that I need to pay gets paid. So the good thing will be that hopefully this credit card will get paid off. I'm not charging any more on the credit card. <laughs> Besides gas, um, and gas is getting replaced and paid off immediately. So what I do is I pump gas, then I go right into the app of the credit card, and I make the payment. So it kind of just evens right out. But it looks like that is it for September's budget. I will come back on Saturday or Sunday to show you guys the August 30th paycheck budget. That'll be a bi-weekly budget. I'll give you the breakdown of that, how much I got paid, whether I got any um, overtime in there. So that'll be nice to be able to allocate those funds. First and foremost, I want to say thank you to Z. Um, there wasn't a full name on there, but just Z. I got a $20 donation. Oh my God, a $20 super thanks. It's called super thanks. $20 super thanks. I was just so shocked. I'm like, oh my God. I literally said out loud, oh my God. <laughs> I told my daughter, she was like, what? <laughs> so thank you so much, Z. I really appreciate you. Thank you for blessing me with that. I really appreciate that. It was just so nice of you. I didn't expect that at all. Thank you so much. Thank you all for watching and for commenting and showing love. Um, thank you so much for watching and spending time with me today. As always, I want you to remember that it is about progression and not about perfection. Happy saving, everybody. Bye. Mm -hmm.